Welcome, folks, to another episode of The Sports Science Associated with Covering Elite Receivers. I'm your host, Tyrone A. Vance. Um, this video is designed to uh, pass down to you guys and show you how I got there. Um, you could type in, you could Google me, Tyrone Vance, Ferris State, Honor Roll. You should see me pop up. Uh, it's our conference, 1981. I had um, a few uh, NFL free agent trials. Uh, received a letter from Dallas Cowboys. Uh, personally spoke with and uh, worked out with uh, the Lions personnel director. A player personnel director and I had letters from agents that was representing um, a few other uh, NFL teams now <clears throat> as my story goes and if you uh, review the journey you know I never took any of my tryouts ended up in the military um, but that's in the past now in the future um, I, I, yeah definitely I wanted to see how my skill set because I had a different skill set I played off the ball only I didn't play press coverage. Not to say they wouldn't try to make me play press, but um, back then, press coverage wasn't a big thing back then. Um, it, it, matter of fact, I strictly use off-the-ball coverage, so you can have great success playing off-the-ball. It makes sense, as I'm going to explain it to you, especially when you start playing angles. Um, those angles make sense. That's where the sports science part come in. Now, this, this, these drills and the way to play this on angles, anything under uh, seven yards, uh, was introduced to me by my first coach, Coach Charles Terry. I spoke a little bit about him in uh, the journey. Well, Coach Terry said, you know, hey, get about four yards back. Use your speed and quickness. Read the guy's waist, and his waist will lead you to the football. And nine times out of 10, that kind of what happened and I got better and better, faster and faster. Now, this is a six cone drill, six cone drill here, six cones. It takes, you see, one, two, the taller cones is going to represent, the taller cone that I have the cone set up here, the taller cones is gonna represent the receiver, the smaller cone represents the defensive back. All right, let me move these out the way, all right. Now, this drill is designed to do two things. Teach you how to read routes, because if you can read it, you can be it, and to improve your muscle memory. So it has to be in your muscle memory of what to do, because you only have a few milliseconds to read and react to that football. Now, receivers, they may be going about eight to 10 yards, um, 10, 10 miles an hour when they're coming off their their uh, coming off their uh, stance. So I like to use an analogy of baseball. Uh, reading routes on the football field is easier than trying to hit a curveball, fastball. Um, they're coming at uh, 100 miles an hour, so that's that's a degree of difficulty. Um, so it's about the repetition that you do and doing those reps the correct way. All right, now let's get off into the drill. So what you want to do is on a football field, and I like doing this, you can do it indoors, but you know, I always went outdoors to do my drills. Um, I didn't have cones back in the day, believe it or not. I used, um, I used uh, gym shoes, old gym shoes. Uh, let's go to show, show, show you how far back I go. But now you, you guys have cones today, great. Okay, so <clears throat> you set your first cone up here. You can set it on any yard line or just set it anywhere on the field. But the key thing is to walk off three yards. And once you walk off three yards, you want to angle at a 45 degree angle and walk off five more additional yards right there. That's, a, that's about where the ball is gonna come out on a slant route. Now this is covering the slant route. Um, I should have mentioned that this is the slant route. I'm gonna put that up there right now. Just write it up there, slant. So, as I was saying, this is about where the ball is going to come here. Released out of the quarterback arm, it's going to be a quick throw, three-step drop, or it's going to be just a quick, um, um, if they're in the shotgun, he's just going to get it and um, just release. Now, to set up the defensive side, you're going to set up 
four yards back, four yards back. Why four yards? Well, four yards, um, for me, I'm below average speed. The average speed in the NFL for receivers and defensive backs is 4.48 seconds. I'm a little bit faster than that, so I only go back four yards because um, I don't want to give the receiver any room to breathe. And that's all I need to attack any short routes, the five yard, the hitch, um, the, the slant route, the pivot route. Um, I, can, um, I can easily attack all those, um, those routes by just aligning myself four yards back. You know, I don't want to take myself out to play. If you at average or below average, you want to get about five yards back. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend being back uh, more than five yards. You're pretty much taking yourself out the play, You're putting yourself in a zone situation, really. Um, so anyway, four yards back here, cone is going to be placed. I place it just on the inside shade of this cone because that's where I'm going to be aligned up. Um, if he's out there by the numbers, which normally if they run in the slant route, that's where they're going to be outside the numbers. Uh, right at the numbers, uh, just inside the numbers, or right outside the numbers. Uh, and that's it. that is a cue. That's kind of let me know. A cue is a predetermination of what to expect next. So if they're outside, I'm expecting something to come back inside. So I'm going to align right on this inside shade. Now, my cadence is going to be four yards back. Once I get four yards back, my, my once my leg get here, my outside leg is going to plant in the ground and then I'm gonna change direction at an angle and it should be approximately five yards as well then I'm coming I'm meeting him at the ball if not getting there sooner um, four yards back off that fourth cadence you want to change direction and explode backwards now I put this six cone right here this little cone right here this represents my split so <clears throat> what I used to like to do I used to work on my splits because I wanted to get to the ball as quickly as I possibly can so it's 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 a it's a uh it's a it's a radius that I use. I'm about like for me, and it could be different. You gotta find your comfort zone, but you want to work on this. And when I change direction, I'm pushing off my back foot, off the ball of my back foot. I got a deep knee bend, and I'm about 33 inches. Um, I'm measuring it. I'm about 33 inches. My comfort zone is 33 inches from my toes to the back of my heel. That's a great knee bend for me. It puts me, it, it makes me feel like I'm coming out the blocks, exploding to this ball, to this receiver right here. And I'm attacking his outside shoulder. That's my point of aim. My point of focus is his outside, outside arm because I can find the point of that football um, just in case I get there a little bit late. <clears throat> um, I can find the point of that football and get my hand in there right in time to punch that ball out of there. <clears throat> punch that ball out of there. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> And strip down. Um, that's the method I use. A lot of times I can make a play on the inside because I can see the ball coming. Um, and I can make an inside play on the ball here again, finding the point of that football and um, knocking it away. So either way, but you'll be able to see it because um, <clears throat> as you backpedal, you're going to be using your peripheral vision, watching the receiver's waist, watching that, that his outside foot is going to make a distinct plant. And he's going to his waist is going to make a 45 degree angle and he's going to be headed toward the spot where the quarterback wants to throw the ball. And our job conversely is to beat him to the spot of the ball. And then our primary purpose um, uh, as a defensive back is to not let the receiver, the ball touch the receiver's hands. Uh, receivers are receivers for a reason. They can really catch the ball. So the best way to uh, negate them is to uh, not let the ball touch their hands. So <clears throat> this drill is designed to do a couple of things. Teaches you how to read routes. Reading routes is very important, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, and to develop muscle memory. You don't have time to think. You only have time to react. So as soon as you see it, and, and as, you, as you do these drills over and over again, you start getting a feel for it a slant route, what is a slant, when they're going to do a pivot route, or when they're going to do a quick out. You can just see and feel it develop, developing because you rehearsed it so many times. It's a rehearsal when you're on the field, when you're practicing. But I don't want no wasted motion. I just want to get to where they throw footballs at. That's all I want to do. I mean, yeah, I worked on foot drills and all the other drills, but mainly when I was by myself, and I was by myself. I didn't have a partner. If you do have a partner, that's great. 
you if you do have a partner have the partner play the receiver have him walk through first so you can start and you should be looking at his waist and as he go back one you go back one and he go back go up two excuse me you go back two he goes back three he's gonna be there you're gonna go back three and then that fourth step is your explosion step that's where your back foot is gonna hit so now he's gonna plant and angle this way but you're gonna be exploding like a sprinter at an angle toward the spot where the ball is gonna be thrown. <clears throat> so that's how the drill is set up. So that's what we wanna do. And I went over the reasons why we wanna do it. So here's the key points of all of this. Oh, I'm sorry, let me go back because you wanna walk through it first, then half speed it, then go full speed, and then you go full speed. Now, when you work in this drill, make sure you guys are just doing just the slant. Don't do any other drill because this is the drill. You, you're, this is a drill designed to help you build muscle memory and learn how to read routes. So you want to over and over and over again, just run the slant, run the slant, and you'll start seeing it. You start start seeing it develop. And then you want to use your peripheral vision into the quarterback um, so you can get a, a feel for when he's about to release that ball. Um, a lot of times, if if um, while I was reading that, my backpedaling, if that ball wasn't coming out if, on his break, and then I know it wasn't a slant. It's probably going to be a double move. Because they'll try to hit me with a double move because they actually think that I'm jumping the route. But I'm not really jumping the route. I just read it so quickly. And my reaction time to it is so quick because I've rehearsed it already. I hope this makes sense to you guys. So, um, all right, let's go over some of the key points um, on this drill. Uh, key takeaways. You want to have an explosive back pedal. The back pedal must be explosive. Um, and it's a drill that I'm going to show you guys. Um, actually, um, it's kind of set up, embedded in here. Um, it's a drill where, where you measure off your comfort zone when you, from your back of your toes to the to the front of your toes to the back of your heel. And um, once, you, once you find that comfort zone, you set your two cones out um, in those two spots. And um, you just explode frontwards towards your comfort zone. Explode frontwards to your comfort zone where you got that deep knee bend, as deep as you, you feel comfortable with. But you want to practice that real quickly, you know, over and over and over again. That helps you in, in whatever you do on one leg, you do on the other leg. But you want to do that to get that perfected so you can get a good feel for um, uh, change of direction because change of direction is absolutely very important. Some of these drills now, if you notice, uh, I, I, I do... Uh, I, I critique a lot of the um, highlights games of the week, and you'll see those posted up as well. You want to check those out because you can see how slow some of these guys are in their reaction time. And some of the things I'm explaining here, they would be much better off if they adopted this type of technique instead of uh, press cover, uh, which I think is really is, is fundamentally unsound. This drill here would get you fundamentally sound and, and give you a, a good feel of a, a technique that you can depend on, rely on, and trust. And we all know coaches love to play kids that they can trust on that football field. So, highly suggested. And number two, waist to foot, waist to foot. So important. You always, whenever I'm practicing, and, and generally I was practicing by myself, so I was just uh, visualizing what I used to see in practice all the time when they was running that slant route. I visualize him coming toward me. I'm watching that waist. I can see that foot hit, and I'm changing direction. That's what you want to do. Waist to foot, waist to foot. It's very important. But in conjunction with waist to foot, waist to foot, you have to be using peripheral vision, your peripheral vision, uh, at the same time, because you need to be able to see whether or not that ball is coming out or not. If it's not coming out, expect another uh, uh, secondary move. Waist to foot, waist to foot. Now, it's very important to explode off the back foot when you change in direction. Explode off the back foot when you're changing direction. You want, your focal point wants to be his outside shoulder, so you want to attack his outside shoulder. That's basically if you if if a receiver run a perfect route and the quarterback throws it perfectly to his hands, the little diamond shaped hands, um, that's what you want to disrupt. So that's where you want to go. If it goes a little bit inside on his back hip, that's good for me. 
because I can see that too. I'm using my peripheral vision. I see ball coming. I'm just going to use my, um, my offhand and knock that away um, as well. Now, when you attack his outside shoulder, you want to use your outside arm to attack his outside shoulder. Now, if you do see that ball coming inside hip, fine. Use your offhand, your inside uh, arm, and uh, find that football and just poke it away. Um, but you definitely will get there a lot quicker using this type of technique. Uh, guarantee it. Uh, the game is going to slow down for you. Uh, let me go over number six, locate the football. Obviously, we just talked about that. You got to locate it, see it coming. That's why you use your peripheral vision. Got to find that football. You always have to see the football. That's going to be important. I'm going to go over that in some of these later drills because a lot of guys, when I be critiquing some of these uh, highlights uh, from, from, from game to game, week to week, a lot of these guys can't find the football. That's their main problem. Well, two problems. Uh, problem number one, they're not in position to make a play. You know, you got to be in position if you want to make a play on that football. It's position first ball second because if you're not in position you can't make a play on the football anyway so make being in position a point of emphasis and i'm gonna teach you guys the proper technique to get in proper position on each route that uh, receivers like to run so number six we talked about that located football yeah so in all in all if we if we learn how to read routes build muscle memory the game will slow down the game is going to slow down. It's almost like the receivers is going in slow motion almost, almost because it's built in muscle memory. You've seen it time and time again because you've practiced it over and over and over again. So that's the slant route. That's the slant route. So I'm going to do some, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going to um, have some drills put up um, that, 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 that works on the variations of these uh, of the slant route, like the slant and go. Um, you got the pivot route. Uh, those are the two things. Um, they come, a receiver try to attack your toes, and and that's why I don't get uh, the press cover thing because it's so it's so easy to get your hips frozen one way or the other, and to get your your cushion ate up, and it's easier to get stacked. And what I mean by stacked, the receiver is in front of you. Um, and you're behind the receiver looking at the back of his numbers. You, that's, a never, that's never a good spot to be in. It's, it's definitely difficult to uh, make a play on the football when you're uh, looking at the back of the receiver's numbers. And, and, and you're running, and you don't even know where the football is at. You have no idea. So, anyway, that's it for the slant route. I'll see you guys on the next, see you guys on the next training video.